I was meditating upon this gospel. I was thinking about the temple being thrown down. And uh, it reminded me of Notre Dame Cathedral nearly burning to the ground just before Easter. There were a lot of upset people, of course, right across the world. And it got me to thinking, like, what nearby, if it were to collapse, would cause a similar reaction, you know? Maybe it would be Peggy's, Peggy's Cove, the lighthouse, if that was swallowed up into the ocean. There'd be a lot of upset people here. But I kind of landed on Kaiser's subs. <laughs> you know, if that, that's a sackful institution. If that ever disappeared, I don't know what we'd do. You know, there's something deep within the human spirit, on one level anyway, that completely resists death and decay. We just resist it. Whether it's buildings or families or communities, anything that's torn apart, we get upset. There's something deep inside of us that at its core, I believe, is a longing for the resurrection. It's a longing for heaven. It's that knowledge that we are created to live forever. We're not meant to just disappear. So whenever we see something, my friends, that reminds us of God, that reminds us of the divine attributes of goodness, truth, beauty, and oneness, bears the, those divine attributes, we're reminded that we're created for so much more. So much more. Jesus has to remind us today, though, that as beautiful or good or true or one as these things are, as much as they remind us of God, they are not God himself. That at some point, they're all going to crumble. They're all going to disappear. All good things on this earth will come to an end. But God won't. And we won't either if we remain in right relationship with him. We are indeed created for eternity. It's amazing to think about this. The first reading reminds us, For you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. If we persevere in God's love, then the suffering we experience, the death that we experience while on this earth in any form, will be overcome through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, experienced in our own lives, even while we're here to a degree, but certainly in heaven, where every tear will be wiped away and everything made new. Of course, while we are still here, we do have to deal with suffering. We have to deal with loss. It's not fun. And we're reminded of that in a particular way in the month of November. We pray for the poor souls in purgatory. We rejoice with all the saints on All Saints Day. We hope to join their blessed company one day. We remember our veterans who have sacrificed so much for us. We pray for persecuted Christians around the world. All of this in November. It's a month in which we look our mortality square in the face. It's not an easy thing to do. And I think we've been doing that as a parish as well. In this communication series this past month, as a parish we've been looking at our mortality square in the face can probably identify with Jesus speaking about the temple and saying, it feels like stones are coming tumbling down. Our buildings are not in great shape. Our finances are not in great shape. And if you're like me, that sometimes might leave your heart and mind not in great shape as well. That's how I feel every time I look at the data. And it's okay to feel that way. It's natural. But we can't stay there. We have to turn back to the Lord, who is eternal. I do encourage you to go watch the videos if you haven't seen them, and do watch them all because the three presentations are meant to be seen together, not in isolation. And I want to point us back to our pastoral plan, to our vision and mission here at Holy Trinity, which I'm going to dare summarize in one word, which is at the heart of everything we do. It's actually a person, the second person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus himself. Jesus is our hope. Just like in the gospel today, if buildings need work, if finances are depleted, we need to go back to the one thing, the one person who is eternal, unchanging, and will never, ever, ever let us down. And that is only Jesus himself. 
He offers himself as a solution to our problems, and I think we need to take him up on his offer. With and in Jesus, we can band together and be something new together, make something new together. Jesus says to us today, it won't be easy, but if we persevere, if we're willing to pay the cost for him, we'll gain our souls by our endurance. We're also reminded in the second reading that none of us can afford to be idle about it because it requires us all to be involved. And if we do that, it is possible in and through Jesus. Of course, this requires a lot of practical realities. It will require us to be invitational to the wider community, to figure out what to do with the state of our buildings, rebuild our finances, get involved in ministry. All of that's possible, but only if Jesus remains Lord. Of everything, absolutely everything that we do here, Jesus at the center. And so I want to leave with you just some words from Pope Francis in his encyclical Joy of the Gospel, where he reminds us of just these things, that we have great hope. If only we allow Jesus to do his great work in us personally and in our parishes, if we give God permission to move and act as he sees fit. And so here's what our Holy Father says to us. The new evangelization calls for personal involvement on the part of each of the baptized. Every Christian is challenged here and now to be actively engaged in evangelization. Indeed, anyone who has truly experienced God's saving love does not need much time or lengthy training to go out and proclaim that love. Every Christian is a missionary to the extent that he or she has encountered the love of God in Christ Jesus. We no longer say that we are disciples and missionaries, but rather that we are always missionary disciples. If we're not convinced, let's look at those first disciples who immediately, after encountering the gaze of Jesus, went forth to proclaim him joyfully. We have found the Messiah. A true missionary who never ceases to be a disciple knows that Jesus walks with him, speaks to him, breathes with him, works with him. He senses Jesus alive with him in the midst of the missionary enterprise. Unless we see him present, at the heart of our missionary commitment, our enthusiasm soon wanes, and we're no longer sure of what it is we're handing on. We lack vigor and passion. And so Jesus must be present at the heart of all that we do. And if he is, the hope we have is unshakable, because our hope is not in anything that can disappear, crumble, or be taken away, but in God himself, who will never abandon or forsake us.